Well, I think it, it started when I was really young, but I didn't actually know what taxidermy was, but when I was probably three or four, my grandmother gave me some of her fox fur stoles and the mouth would kind of open up and bite onto the tail. So that was kind of a form of taxidermy in a way, and I used to dress up in those and really loved them and kept them like toys. But then when I was about 16, I discovered that taxidermy was something you could actually learn how to do. And I bought a, an eight-pointer stag's head from an antique shop, had it on the wall and was just obsessed with, with learning how to do it. And I, I approached a few different taxidermists in New Zealand and none of them would really take me seriously. It wasn't until I moved to Melbourne when I was about 18 that I met a retired taxidermist and he offered to teach me the craft. Mum said that recently she saw an old friend from, you know, when I was a little girl. I used to go to kindy with her, with her daughter, and um, you know she'd pick us up from kindergarten. And at maybe three or four years of age, I'd sit in the back of the car and say to my friend Emma, "Emma, when you die, do you want to get buried or do you want to get all burned up?" And she, you know, obviously it stuck in her mind, and she thought it was quite an unusual thing for a, a girl that age to be thinking about. I spent a bit of time in the country because we had family out there and that's what, what turned me vegetarian was um, going out to visit my uncle on his farm and I, I turned up, I was probably about nine and there was half a dead horse hanging from a tree and he explained that they'd, you know, they didn't need it anymore so they'd shot it and they were feeding it to the dogs and that's when I really put two and two together and realised what I was eating so on the way home I told my parents I wanted to be a vegetarian and they allowed me to do so. My, my goal with my work is to celebrate the life and to show like fragility and beauty. I don't want to do things that are grotesque or shocking so um, I think a lot of people when they hear about my work, they imagine it to be something quite disgusting that they don't, wouldn't like, but a lot of people come to me and say that they'd actually, you know, assumed they wouldn't like it, but they really love it and they think it's really respectful and peaceful. So I think, it's, I think that respect that I use in the work is a big reason why people respond so well to it. 